Welcome to the Magic Our Way podcast. I'm Kevin Smith, and now get ready for all the Disney there is. Turn up your mouse ears, kids. It's Kevin, Danny, Eli, and Lee. Jumbo, everyone. Harambe. And welcome to another edition of the Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. Magic Our Way. The Magic Our Way podcast. They are truly magical and whatnot. Asante San, everyone. You are listening to the Magic Ari podcast from New Orleans, Louisiana, in the United States of America. We are artistic buffs talking about Disney stuff. And this is a show in which every opinion is welcome. MagicArway.com is where you can find us for this episode. We discuss retheming rock and roller coaster. How about that? And look, this isn't your typical polished practice pixie dust of Disney podcast. No, sir. We are not in the parks every day trying to tell you the best place to catch Divine. That's right, Kev. We're here to drink, talk some Disney, and tell you how we'd reimagine your rock and roller coaster. That's right. So we're ready to party again like we did the last time. We're about to do this one more again this time. One more again. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. I'm Eli. And Lee. Hey, if you want to rock out with Aerosmith, I'm the one you should book with. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so enough of our jibber jabber. Let's get to our armchair imagineering of rock and roller coaster. <laughs> And here we are on the Hub, our main topic segment of the show. And for this Hub, we are taking a cue from the Moican Nation. Yes, that's right. We're taking a suggestion that we got re- received from the Magic Our Way's Pleasure Island Facebook group. If you're not a member of that, make sure you do that, man. There's a lot of good conversation there. It's a public group. You're free to speak your mind. You're absolutely free to say whatever you want. And we'll talk about it. But anyway, one of our longtime listeners, Susanna. Oh, Susanna, we oh, call Susanna. her. Oh, Susanna. She posted, uh, or she reposted Walt Disney Imagineering's post back on August 12th about them wrapping up uh, a shoot for the forthcoming series of Muppets Mayhem, which features the Electric Mayhem band. How about that, Danny? Anyway. Damn straight, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, they started doing that, and that you know caused some conversation within the Weekend Nation, of course. And uh, one Mr. Chris Lucas... Uh, who you might know as the author of Top Disney, right? He, he, does, he does the top 100 top 10 lists of the best of Disney, from the man to the mouse and beyond. And we happen to appear in that book as one of his favorite podcasts, his top 10 podcasts to listen Woo-hoo! to. Nice! Bought that book. It's available on our Amazon store, so amazon.com forward slash magic our way. Make sure you go check that out. Support Chris and all his endeavors and whatnot. But he has this comment, and Chris says this. Uh, in regards to the Muppet Mayhem series, he says, paving the way for a makeover of Rock and Roller Coaster from Aerosmith to the Electric Mayhem, in parentheses, saving Dizzy lots of money and keeping the Muppets relevant. Mm. And th- this could not be more relevant as Disneyland Paris also rethemed their Rock and Roller Coaster to Iron Man. Yeah. If you remember that. For their 30th anniversary, you got a nice. big retheme with that entire land, the Avengers Campus. So. It's like, hey, why not? You're, these guys are absolutely right. You know, they did that over there in Paris. Chris Lucas is suggesting this. So we decided to think about maybe retheming Rock and Roller Coaster over in Walt Disney World. Danny, mm-hmm. what do you think about that? Uh, I like the idea of doing it. I mean, I think we've kind of talked about it for a, a bit that Aerosmith is pretty outdated. Pretty kind of, yeah. They're, they're starting to get uh, out of touch. And I loved his idea. It's one of those ideas... That's so genius that you kind of wish you would have thought of it yourself. <laughs> but that's you know? the thing about them on weekends, right? Them on weekends, we give them that license to do that, and they come up with great ideas. I Only know. geniuses listen to us. Geniuses it, listen to us. That's right. It reminded me of uh, there was somebody that posted a picture of their kind of uh, their wedding announcement. Oh yeah, and they did it in the form of the old school fast pass mm-hmm. ticket that would print brilliant. Out. Brilliant. Absolute Brilliant. genius. So uh, some only a Disney fan would uh, really get, but yeah, I thought that was uh, amazing as well. So anyway, I thought it'd be fun to talk about it. Instead of doing our typical armchair Imagineering segment where we sit down and present this detailed laid outlook out, of, yeah, 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 our uh, typical armchair Imagineering. how we would do it, because there's two reasons for this. One, the idea just occurred to me last night. <laughs> hey, yeah, it was a good idea. It was so good. I woke up early this morning. Like an there apple fell on your head. And then two, uh, we've been having internet issues over here at Casa de Lawless 
for quite some time. Which affects the studio. Of which course. affects the yes. studio and also affects my ability to go back on Disney Plus and do some research yes, on yeah. whatever property that I would think that I would like to choose for this. Fair Absolutely, enough. Absolutely, yes. So uh, I thought it'd be a little bit more fun instead of getting into this detail thing complete with dialogue and plot description and layout and what Our the building would brilliance. look like. Yeah, typical, typical, typical brilliant. Yeah, we genius this yes. too sometimes. We'd make this more of a free-flowing conversation. I thought it'd be fun to start the conversation right where Chris left it in talking about the electric mayhem. How would y'all envision that? Well, that's the that's cr- what made this so hard because that was such a great idea. Like, Isn't how do you though? top that? How do you top the electric mayhem and Dr. Teeth and the whole band? Like, I'm, I'm already seeing it. Like, the ride vehicles are like a big psychedelic bus. Yep. And, you know, the, the music and the cue and the music on the ride and all that. Stuff. I mean, it's just like it just it's, it writes itself. Is, it does. That's why. Yeah, say. and that's yeah. the concert we're so, trying I mean, to get to. That would be amazing. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the concert we're trying to get to for sure. And I could just see it now in my head where the Muppets, the Muppets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're they're trying to take over that concert, and so the Electric Mayhem have to hurry up and get across town and get there. And and I think Chris had kind of laid it out where the visions that you would see as you're going along on this roller coaster would be similar to the. Uh, can you picture that? segment of the Muppet movie. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I, I think that one of the things about Rock and Roller Coaster that's really cool is when you just think about the initial you're being taken off at a really crazy speed and that is what would inspire me to start anything going forward. So yeah, I would do something where it's probably the Muppet show. And then oh. the band is late to the show. Like yeah, Kermit's there and he's like, blah, 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 where's the band? And he's freaking out. And <laughs> so you have to hurry up and like dart out there to the Muppet show and then like um, for a, a thing though that I I don't like mm-hmm. about Rock and Roller Coaster, besides the fact that it broke the first couple of years I tried to get on it when I went with you guys, is that everything's so dark and kind of disjointed. So yeah. I would hope that they would fix that so you would be from one environment to the next. But that's what I would try to do. No, but I like that. I, I like that idea because uh, yeah, I could just see them as you walk into the studio where you have that video screen, you're watching Electric Mayhem, and then. Kermit pops up on the screen like, guys, where are you? You don't need to start over here. The show started five minutes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. pops in and he's like, hey. Yeah, and he's like, but we'll never make it. He's like, well, we do have a backup band and then cut to the movement. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and they're like, no, we can't let them take our set. Exactly. Complete with Dave Grohl like sitting there. <laughs> <Damn, laughs> the yeah. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. We're, we're not going to sit here and detail every aspect of it, but just kind of a general idea of how we would make it work. Some mm-hmm. different ideas, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me say this. When part of the conversation on Chris's reply was like the 3D show would eventually go away, which yeah. is yeah. pretty sad. Yeah, yeah sad that was my one problem. problem with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But what if we moved it to where that cars, whatever is going on, whatever the cars thing is that they have oh, the back over there by Rock Lightning and Roller Lane Coaster. Training Academy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Move, yeah. Racing move the Muppets Theater over there, and as you exit out of the ride, and that's what I was thinking too when the, when I was kind of brainstorming some of my ideas is like let's move the exit for Rock and Roller Coaster to a different area to where it drops you off into that section and then you've got another attraction there. The racing, Show, the racing Academy. Yeah. yeah, the Racing Academy. Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy, yeah. So, that, 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 yeah. that, yeah. So let's replace that okay, okay, with okay. Muppets Something Vision better. 3D. Maybe an updated version of Muppets Vision 3D. But either way, you tie those two things together. Because right now it's Rock and Roller Coaster here and some Cars thing. Hmm. So it doesn't even and like, Tower of Terror. go together. Yeah, I'd be cool with moving the the 3D movie. You know, the, anything that helps keep it, I'd be good with that. Mm-hmm. So before we get into really kind of getting into what each of us were thinking about, I, I thought it would be fun to talk about more of the creative aspect of this. Like, because to me, I like the the talking about how you come up with something and how you envision something and, and what the pitfalls and the problems are in, in, in doing that. And with Rock and Roller Coaster, to me. This one, like, it made me realize just exactly why it is that Aerosmith has lasted so long. Because it's really hard to me when you're trying to envision something like that. There's a couple of things that need to go into it. One, the property has to be mature enough to handle a high thrills roller coaster. Like, you can't just put Tangled in there <laughs> and have a roller coaster that goes upside down and, and whatnot and hair shooting everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Little Susie's like, Mama, Mama, I want to go see <laughs> Rapunzel. It's got to, the, the property that you're using has to be mature enough to handle the, 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 
the type of ride, the type of yeah, yeah, what's involved. Right. The chutzpah. Yeah, you have to have the chutzpah. <laughs> I like that. Chutzpah. You got a chutzpah. <laughs> then two, it has to fit on Sunset Boulevard. Hmm. In the middle of uh, Hollywood Studios. I mean, that's kind of a, a, a tough one to pull off But does the well. Rock and Coaster really fit Sunset Boulevard? Sure, because it's like a recording studio. Okay, like, it, is it, does it fit it perfect? No. But you can be like, okay, I get it. You know, I'm, I'm walking down the... the Sunset Boulevard, and here's the Hollywood Tower Hotel. Here's a record studio. Here's this and that and the other. I, I can get, I can okay, get behind that. Okay. You need the movie stars and you got rock stars. Sure, you can kind of go together. And then that's tricky. Third, music's a, a key component to this. And so, how do you go ahead and, and make that one work as well? Because all three of those things are just not easily found. A more mature Disney property. Mm-hmm. That's tough okay. for a Some thrill-based crowd. To bring someone in. Right, right. That fits within Hollywood that also has some tie-in to music. And again, obviously, like they did it, like Kevin said, with Iron Man, where they kind of rethemed it to that. So music is probably the least important. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, right. yeah. yeah, but I, Iron I Man has a that. rocket theme, too. But, you know, I, yes. I, I thought about yeah, it. Yeah, the soundtrack. There yeah. has to be some yeah. kind of a music. I thought about oh, rap and roller yeah. coaster, but I was like, man, that might be really rap tough. and roll. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that might be oh, really tough. To rap oh, rap and roller coaster. <laughs> oh, that's okay. So there you go. There's Run your, DMC. There's your first thing. Uh, Run DMC. Bust through the wall. Oh, while yeah. Smith is recording. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and then you get a whole new version of Walk This Way. Yeah, we baby. gotta get to this concert. Walk This Way. Maybe LL Cool J guides you through or something like that. Yeah, Will Smith slaps you at the end. <laughs> that's what I was. Yeah, so <laughs> it was the point of, of to what you were saying, though, Danny. It's like even music is like sort of a factor, mm-hmm. not the biggest factor, as crazy as it sounds to say rock and roller coaster. But yeah, but if you change the theme, it doesn't necessarily have to have the music because that means now it's not right. rock and whatever. Right. right. The music but, goes along with it because it is Aerosmith, but the music does not have to go along with it if you go with a different property. You could just do sure. rock and roller coaster and just put all kind of rock from all ages in sure. it, and it would still be the same effect, in my opinion. Rock of ages. Yeah. There well, you go. Really. Let's start with something that uh, I think we've discussed this on the show before, but something that obviously wouldn't work now would be like Gardens of the Galaxy. That would be a really great rock yeah. and roller coaster redo. It would perfect be Gardens fit. of the Galaxy. Perfect fit, except that they just did it <laughs> over there in Epcot. So it would really be doing the same thing twice. Nah, I mean, you know, you never can have enough Guardians as far as I'm concerned. But I'm the Marvel uh, guy. So. I saw Guardians too. You can have enough. <laughs> I had enough. Well, give three a chance, Dad. That would have been number one on my list if they hadn't already done it in Epcot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If that new ride didn't exist, it's I'm the one that that mentioned that one of whatever episode we had, mm-hmm. and that to me is like the soundtrack right there disqualifies it. Boom, you. That's what that movie is based around, or what. That's what I walk away from that movie with is the whole soundtrack to it. It's like, oh man, this song is great, and that song fit perfectly in this scene, and so on and so forth. So, the music is such an integral part of it. And then you could sell like um, Walkmans in the in the gift shop, you know, yeah. <laughs> and stuff like that. So oh, you could also cool. tie in a lot of merchandise to it. But yeah, I don't know that it would be better than Cosmic Rewind. So I need well, to experience it myself to see, you know, like I still think like, OK, I'm glad they went this direction instead of Rock and Roller Coaster. I would I would think in, in this particular case of reimagining that ride. You would definitely need the visuals of the Guardians, uh, in my opinion, to kind of pull off the music part. I know music is one thing, and then we just said how it's not that big of a factor, but you're taking it and putting it in a soundtrack of a movie. Well, well, time out. It's not like it's not that big of a factor. It's like you're you're going to sacrifice something. You there's no way to get all three into it. So with Lee and in Guardians, yeah, the music would be an important part of it. Where Lee's idea would have had issues is how do you fit that on Sunset Boulevard? So in other words, you're, you're sacrificing something. No. So in in Lee, Lee's like, okay, yeah, Guardians music, yeah, there's a rock with and the music. through outer space. We could do that, but yeah, you have to. But change you're the now you're sacrificing that aspect of it. So yeah, you could sacrifice the music, but you don't have to. You can get music in there. There are a couple of different properties that have great music that would work. But they fail on some other level. And that's what it is. That's the tricky part of this is trying to find that one thing. And you're going to sacrifice somewhere. 
I mean, even Epcot, the way they kind of shoehorn Guardians of the Galaxy <laughs> oh, <from Britain. laughs> into yeah. there, it's clear they this yeah this should not be here. Same thing with Avatar. Uh, it's clear it shouldn't be there. They sacrifice right. a certain level of right, but you need the visuals yeah. to pull with the music. With mm-hmm. yeah, that's your thing. Unfortunately, I think like all four of the ideas I had, none of them fit uh, into <laughs> Sunset, Sunset Boulevard. Boulevard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of with them on that. Even. All right, well, let me, let me, okay, so uh, why don't we start with, uh, I'll, I'll go first, just to kind of give, like, again, a, a general basic element of, of how we want to present our ideas, so that way we don't get too far caught up, and again, I'm sacrificing music a bit on this one, Understood. but I kind of felt like Slaughter Race from Ralph Breaks oh, the Internet yeah. would have been perfect <gasps> for this. Oh, wow. And I'm thinking to myself that what you do <laughs> Is you take that building and now it's no longer a music recording studio. It's GeForce Games. It's this game design studio where they do nothing but video game designs. And if I could, like in that little pre-show scene, I'd have Steven Tyler play, you know, the executive <laughs> of GeForce Games. Like, hey, <laughs> welcome to GeForce Games. We're developing our new game, and it, it's all about. This new upgrade, they're, they're relaunching uh, That's Slaughter Race, <laughs> but it's Slaughter Race 2. I have a great idea. <laughs> it should We're be redo a relaunch. Oh, no, I'm tying his hands behind his back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're handcuffing Steven Tyler. He's not going to do that to us anymore. Slaughter Race. I like that. I got two things for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, it is. Actually, it's funny because I actually had Wreck It Ralph on my list. Oh, did you? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought what you could do is uh, something to do with Hero's Duty, where mm-hmm. you are inside of Hero's Duty, and while you're going through the coaster, you got like all the bugs flying at you, mm-hmm. and maybe somehow you can shoot at them. I'm not sure if that that'd probably be tough because the, the ride yeah, is so you're fast. Yeah, you're gonna be too fast. Yeah, the bugs will be getting shot somehow, whether you do it or you know, someone, a laser comes off screen and does it, but through the ride, you're going through hero's duty, having to battle all these bugs and aliens and, and stuff like that. So, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not sure how you build up to that through the queue, but either way, the actual ride system itself would be based on hero's duty. Well, let me tell you how I was going to do mine. And that may help you with how you, how you could have done yours is that my thought process is going to be after you go through that pre-show thing where Steven's telling you about how, we're relaunching uh, Slaughter Race, but this is going to be Slaughter Race 2, and you're going to be the first one to test drive Shank's new car or whatever it is. <laughs> so they're going to sit you there in the car just like they always do. Instead of sh- shooting you through that tunnel, you're going to have to redo it where it looks like the Wi-Fi router tunnel that you go through. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. And then, boom, you shoot them through that, and then you go through this little section, like a small section of the actual going through the Internet part of Become it. Become a packet. Yeah, right. like, yeah, your packet of yeah. information broken apart. Well, when yeah. you look around, you're yeah. seeing like eBay and and eBoy, uh, eBoy, <laughs> eBoy, yeah, Fandango, all all the different little Hulu sites. There you go. Yeah. Until you get to that more. familiar <laughs> yeah. skull entrance of Slaughter Race, go through there, and now you're zooming through Slaughter Race. Maybe there could have been some scenes in there with. Uh, were you passing by Vanellope? Were you passing by Shank? Were you passing by that creepy clown guy? That was more of the general idea. So you could do the exact same thing, I think, Lee, with uh, the Hero's Duty portion of it where you could just as easily say, okay, you're standing in that router tunnel, but instead of going through the Wi-Fi router thing, you're, you're stepping into that tunnel that says um, Hero's Duty. Yeah, the, the lobby or whatever. Yeah. Where the, oh, that little yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. That little electricity guy, I can't remember his name. Do you have anything yeah. to declare? <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Any fruit? No. <laughs> I mean, you could also do like Sugar Rush just as easily. Yeah, you could do Sugar Rush. Oh, car. yeah. But yeah. the reason I went with Slaughter Race is because probably the similar reason you went with Heroes Duty is that Candy Crush seems like, okay, that's fun. You know, like mm-hmm. you want to say this might be menacing. And Slaughter Race, <laughs> the ride, kind of tells young kids this might not be for you <laughs> yeah that's, that is again that's a, that's you said it earlier the problem with this whole idea is that you're gonna be um you're gonna be catering to teenagers mm-hmm. so, you know people that are tall enough to ride the ride right exactly first of all you know six six seven year olds may or may not even be tall enough to ride this ride um the only thing i'll say with sugar rush is that i was thinking they could redo the track itself and do the more like a dueling dragons type situation where you're mm. so you're actually racing 
Mm, the other I like cars. That, yeah. that would kind of be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we're racing the other cars, but I still think Heroes Duty wins as far as the idea for this because it, it's it's also yeah you're right it's kind of menacing it's kind of like it's action you know and there, there's a lot going on and there's danger and stuff so that, yeah. that makes it a, I think a better fit. Yeah. The only difference the only reason I would flip flop to go to Candy Crush is because that it's more of a racing game. And it's more, it, it lends itself sure. more to be in a car, whereas Heroes Duty is more of a uh, Gears of War. Oh, Gears of War. Yeah, yeah the like free, so. free, free yeah. moving. Yeah. Free world, yeah. Well, it could be on a, world, it yeah. could be in a tank, I guess, and just going really fast. A yeah, long up stuff. A super tank. Yeah, put something on the side of it. You can redo the ride vehicles to where they're like these body armor suits. Sure. Something like that. Yeah, That'd that cool. works. All right, Kev, it, Eli, which one of y'all wants to go next? Which one of y'all have an idea? Um, mine was, you know what? Uh, after hearing this little discussion, I was like, man, you know what? That was a good point about the, the geography of it, and uh, Dude, bro. did not think about that. It's okay. My thing was, I wanted to go with the velocity of the ride. That's what inspired me, like you said earlier. Like, what would, mm-hmm. what was the genesis of your idea going forward? I went with that because I missed this ride for like two years. Like every time I went, it was broken, and then like the finally the time. I went, it was with all of y'all, and you know, I got launched, and like, you know, I was hooked ever since. So that made me think, how wild would it be to be like Captain America's shield being launched at like bad guys and this and that at that? So that's what I would probably go with. I didn't think about it being in Hollywood Studios. I was just thinking Marvel. Yeah, really but isn't wasn't... Captain America from that time period? Well, the time period is kind of relatively speaking, uh, you know, because uh, you're talking about Aerosmith. I mean, minimum, yeah. you're talking 80s. Right. You yeah. can switch right. So now. <laughs> you, you, can, you can stretch the time period, but I mean, you could just as easily say. You could the, break the fourth wall and just say all the actors are just talking. Or that you could just be like, no, 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 this building right here is a uh, tribute to, you know, because Captain America used to do all those little uh, PSAs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is <laughs> that was. This is where we shot these PSAs, or this is a <laughs> Captain cool. America uh, museum of sorts. Of course, uh, yeah. What, that kind of thing. You, so, I mean. Is it cheating? Yeah, of course it's cheating. But hey. that's what they do now when they retrofit all this crap. That's right. If you they, ain't cheating, you ain't that's trying. how they got the guardians <laughs> in there. Exactly. So that that's one way to get about get around it. Like just, just like we we're talking about with Lee's ideas. Everything that I said about you're walking into a gaming thing, mm-hmm. all that could apply to everything Lee said. You could also walk. You're walking into a like a army recruiting uh, area. Sure. That, the whole that whole Sunset Boulevard is based off of you know the war effort, World War II, and all these other things. So. Mm-hmm. You know, you tie it in that way. And that's you maybe true. got the USO band music playing. They play music. He's coming out. Mm-hmm. They got a little stage play. Got some cast members out okay. there doing it. What are you seeing as you're darting through this? So, I mean, to, to kind of boil it down, yeah. I, I thought of Just it general. like when you go in, uh, you see like different um, monuments of different clips from the movies and stuff like that of Captain America's history, but mainly with the shield because that's what the story will be about. When you go into the part where Aaron Smith would be there, uh, you're pretty much watching the characters talk about rebuilding the shield and you get to see the shield being like, you know, welded together and made pretty much. And then you go through the doors when the doors open and the shield on either side of it. So it pops open. You're the shield. And that's how I thought of it. And at the end, you land in Anthony Mackie's hands. Yeah, see, and that was <laughs> coddled by Anthony yeah. Mackie. Like, I got you. Like, I wanted, I, I did. I, I did have one because um, you did say in the beginning what were some weird caveats that you would have with the idea, and one of the things was um, who would you see talking about having the shield as Captain America? That was actually one thing that I did kind of have a, I kind of wrestled with because I was like, man, it would have been cool to have had Tony Stark, but oh no, he's not there anymore. You know, of course Steve Rogers, but then yeah, Falcon. Like I was like, man, like Bucky. Yeah, Bucky. But I, I took Bucky out and I said, well, maybe you put in Fury. But that was a hard part of it. That I was like, well, maybe I'll just bypass that because you could do some past tense future jokes, but then it would be really confusing. Mm-hmm. So I just thought about just making it something where it happened like right after Infinity War or something like that where it got broken and then it got redone. But back in it after shield but yeah. yeah but anyway i would just if i was you because i mean the downfall of your idea is already you know you already know you can't do it yeah you well, can't use captain america so but but if you use falcon america falcon america, <laughs> falcon you're not wrong. america. i don't know that 
that Universal has rights to Falcon America. I don't know either. Black I, America. America, he a local boy. He should <laughs> have the shield. And like, Old Basie. Don't use ba- Old Basie's name. Oh. Yeah, they got Old Basie's name at the gift shop. Then you think of, <laughs> that may be why they're recreating all of the, like, they're killing off Captain America. They're making a new Hawkeye, a new Hulk. They can use. Because they like, we need characters we can use. <laughs> we there need more go, Avengers like if you're going to do that, you know. But, I but that was and that was the other thing was that uh, when I, I actually conceived of doing the ride, I was like, yeah, you can't really have heroes in the actual ride because it's mm-hmm. all disjointed. So, yeah, I just thought of it as you're in the cart and the cart is made like a shield, like they put pieces of the shield around the, the cart. So I don't know if, what the length of it has to be. I don't know. That's too much. Super yeah. stretch. I don't know about yeah. riding on a shield. That's the only thing I'm like. <laughs> Like How do you pull that off? Because you would, you would, you would have. Do they shrink you down? Do they enlarge the shield? Well, you mean like as far as like the imagery from the, the honey? Ride? I shrunk the audience. Yeah, I honey, I shrunk them the on the shield. No, you're the, you're you're just. I mean, think about it like this: like when you have rock and roller coasters, it's just dark. Like so, I was just trying to like imagine everything else around it. So it's easy to just say, okay, you know, we're going into battle. Blah blah blah. These people are attacking us, and yeah, here we go. And then like you're just being launched. You're thrown. That's it. You know, no, I, you skipped a lot of steps in logic, though. <laughs> well, because we were going we're for, on the shield. We go for ball. Die, How did we yeah. get so tiny? Boy, no. Ant Man. Yeah, Ant Man is involved somehow. <laughs> yeah, sure. uh, okay. Itty-bitty. Fine, Quantum Realm. If you there, would, you like, go. Like that. That's what you should have gone with. That would have actually. I bet you they could do Ant. I thought you were going to say that was too crazy of an idea. No, so no, get uh, crazy, crazier than sitting on a shield. Crazy. crazy. <laughs> I can always go crazy. You can't handle the crazy. You don't get want it. Okay, well, fine. Yeah, um, but the point is, is that you get to be the the weapon of the thing, and you get to like you know go back and forth on the track, bop the villains, stuff like that. And then when you you know you knock out at least in this one the Red Skull, and then when he's like oh, and then like you break through the rides over. So you know, I thought it would just be fun though to actually. You're just flying into villains, cutting their heads off. <laughs> like, no, 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 not in the head. Like, you, know, you, you hit him in the chest. You know, you hit him in the chest. You know, uh, yeah, thud. Boom. That's the key button. Because that's what it is. I thought it would be cool. With it sounds you. like bumper cars. You're just bumping. Yes, <laughs> because you're the shit. Like the thing ricochets in the ride yourself. You're going up and down. What I didn't like. It doesn't sound like a roller coaster. It does sound like a roller coaster. <laughs> shield coaster. It's just, that's right. You the shield. That's right. Protect yourself all the time. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Kev, what you got? <laughs> All right, so I, uh, I don't know. Unless we're going to let Lee go. Lee just went. He Did went. He, he, did? he was wrecked Oh, Ralph. that's right. You were wrecking Ralph. Okay, okay. He jumped in the middle of me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he, felt, he felt connected to Slaughter Race, so yeah. that's why we got put on the island on ourselves. He said, yeah, the hell with Danny was talking about. Let's talk yeah. about me. Me. Oh, <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. Right. So that was up to you. You're so, the, you're the uh, final leg. If, if we can all be in agreement that when you look down Sunset Boulevard, the mm-hmm. thing that you see at the end of the street is what? Hollywood Tower Terror. How, do you see even Rock and Roller Coaster at all? No. No, you got to walk Perfect. right up on it. Perfect. Because this took me, the, when we decided to do this particular exercise, it took me to an episode of The Simpsons. That's a good one. That uh, they visited Disneyland. Mm-hmm. And at some point, you know, they spoof in Disneyland, all this, this, that, and the other. And at some point, Bart notices that there's this attraction through the woods that nobody notices that just opened, quote unquote, and um, that they're going to go on it. So that's what they did. And so I thought about that because I'm like, well, you know, you really can't see Rock and Roller Coaster. And if we th- theme this to like that Simpsons episode, uh, the episode being called The Man Who Came to Be Dinner. I had to look that up because I didn't realize. I just remember the episode. I didn't remember what it was. But it's anyway, how creepy as hell. That it is title. creepy as hell. Yeah. Uh, because what happens is that uh, they go to the attraction, you know. And so you imagine yourself, you're going to the left of, Rock and Ro- uh, of Tower of Terror and you go into this thing. You're, like, you're not sure what's going on, but you see the Simpsons there. He's like, yeah, let's check out this new ride. It just opened. They're promoting it. This thing just opened. You go into the, the, the area, into the attraction, and um, you know, as you're walking in, it's like, oh, this looks like a pretty typical ride, ride attraction. Welcome station. Mm-hmm. You know, you board the coaster at one point, and this will require a little change in timing here. But you, you board the coaster a little one point, and you feel like, all right, we're about to go for a ride. You, you, you of course, the track goes, takes that turn, and then it stops, and then it stops, and then in the episode itself, you notice that. Uh, in the episode, everything uh, gets removed and it turns into a spaceship. Because basically what happens is that uh, the Simpsons go into this ride thinking it's a new attraction. 
it turns into a spaceship, and then all of a sudden they get zoomed out into space by the, the alien guys with the tentacles. Oh, okay. you know, oh yeah, to do that saliva. Yeah, yeah, yes. Of- yes, they had the saliva, the slobber oh. stuff, because they're, they're trying to capture humans and stuff for the sacrifice. Oh, yes, wow. Kang so, and Kodos. Yeah, Kang and Kodos. So when they launch, that's the spaceship taking off. And so you go through the little Cobra roll and whatnot. That's the first loop to loop that you go through. And then you're going through space trying to get to their planet because that's what happens in the episode. And just before that, I guess, like the corkscrew area, you reach their planet and then they're giving you a tour of their planet as you're going through. So they continue on. And basically where this attraction would end is uh, as a part in the episode. If you if anybody remembers the episode is where you see Bart. I mean, not Bart. Uh, um, the dad, Homer. Homer. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he's strung up uh, getting ready to be dinner. Because the, the whole premise of it is that uh, the the those aliens they ha- they bring like a species back and they uh, part of their ritual is to consume one of them uh, as their sacrifice. Kind of so like the Twilight Zone episode. Yeah, kind of like the Twilight Zone kind of episode. To serve yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So basically, you're riding on a spaceship going through uh, the, their planet, and um, yeah, you end up where Homer. There, you see it. You get out. And you see him. And he's on a spit. He's like, oh, help me!" Help me. <laughs> And then you can sell all kind of materials and whatnot. You know, you could sell the Simpsons on a plate. Oh, and Lord. Stuff and the oh, Lord. And then, uh, yeah, because they got all kind of stuff that you could rip off as far as merchandising in that episode. It's, I remember that episode vividly because, like, oh, they spoofed Disneyland. It's like, and we, we mentioned about doing this. It's like, oh, that'd be funny. You know, and then I thought to myself, it's like, oh, yeah, you really can't see Rock and Roll Coast. That's perfect. That, that, that sets it up. Wait, yeah. so I got attacked for throwing the shield at people. You got people on speaking getting cooked. I, nobody yeah. says anything on that. I'm just. That was very immature. That was rough. That was very much <laughs> you speed right past that part. That episode, that episode was rough. It's funny because I, I watched that episode again last night, and I, and I remember this one part where Homer just wants to sit on the bench, but there's a line for the bench. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's like a huge long line. And the whole joke is like every ride they try to ride has a huge long line. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's hilarious. And that's when Bart's like, hey, there's no line for this one. Let's go on it. And boom, it's a spaceship for Korg. And, oh, Korg, uh, Korg. What was it? I keep forgetting their names. Um, the two aliens, well, Kang, Kang and Kodos. Kang and Kodos. Kang Thank and you. Kodos. I keep saying Korg. I don't well, know. But why. his idea <laughs> actually sounds like you're in an episode of Simpsons where yeah. wacky stuff would happen. Yeah. You, there needs to be some explanation why you're flying on the shield. <laughs> Not yeah, to belabor yeah, the point. Yeah. yeah. Please doubt. Yeah. No, just, uh, but you say you was, was being neat. We, no, yeah, yeah. the best, Simpsons, yeah. you understand that Cookie's a, like. <laughs> my question would have been because I thought about that as well, but then I kind of like was like, not not using that yeah, particular episode, yeah. but I thought about it as well. I was like, is there the same agreement that Disney and the, that Universal has with Marvel, where Disney can't do anything with Simpsons? Oh, right. But now Disney does own Family Guy, so couldn't you do something with Family Guy where like you're going through? Quahog? Yeah, well, or I'm thinking like one of those chicken Peter fights. Oh, yeah, yes. Well, that would be awesome. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. What the hell is happening right now? There's always a, a part in the fight where he hits his knee or something injures, and then he just sits there for hours going, ah. Oh. Is it, when, ah. He's, it, when he runs and he yeah. stumbles, he'll it, grab his knee. It and just looked like you were pitching yourself. No, no, I'm doing no, that. I'm just so trying I, to mimic Peter because Peter, I love that when uh, he just sits there and does that. I was like, "What's going on in this ride? You pinch your nipples while you're on the ride? Like, what's going oh, no, on? You could, you could take it as spoofing, uh, uh, going after the Family Guy, yeah, the Family Guy Star Wars episodes. Oh, okay, no, I feel you know, that Blue Harvest and all that because you don't have a Family Guy ride. No, I know you that. don't. And and by the way, that's mature enough. You might be onto something though because they put the Orville on Disney Plus. So I mean, oh, that's, the Orville would be funny. Yeah, they promoted that. Oh, that yeah. I don't know how that would work, but I don't know either. I'd have space. To, you know, I've only <laughs> seen the first episode of the Orville, but it's a, it's a cool show. Go right. ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I liked the first episode, but I didn't love it. Like, so it wasn't like, oh, I can't wait to tune in to see what happens in episode two. All right, Lee. Yes. Lee. Uh, so we're gonna go back to you real quick, man. So I don't know. Like, was that your best idea that you threw out first, or you were just piggybacking um, off what I, I was think, saying? I think that was my favorite of the three, of okay. the four or five that I got. But I think this one. The name alone sells it. Okay. Stitches Hawaiian Roller Coaster. Stitches Hawaiian Roller Coaster. Or maybe coaster. not. I like that. No, no, no. It does sell. I'm sorry. I was trying to get Kevin to, to get the camera. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that. Say it again, Lee. Say it again. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Anyway, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me hold yeah, on. Yeah. All right. Go. All right. So for this one, uh, I think the name sells it. Stitches Hawaiian Roller Coaster. Oh, nice. that is awesome. Hey. Nice. I like thank that. you, thank Doobula, you, thank you. baby. <laughs> Doula. Doula. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> it's the music. First of all, is there right? Because you got all the Elvis music, and you of course have the Hawaiian roller coaster song. Yeah, yeah. And I think that 
like just kind of thinking about it, maybe you've got some kind of like Elvis museum that Stitch is visiting or something. Oh, that's good. Um, so that's where you can kind of do the queue and the pre-show and all this, that, and the other. Um, but main thing I'm looking at is the actual ride itself is when you'll hear the Hawaiian roller coaster song. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to do, I'd like for them to redo the track to where you've got like a suspended track system and it looks like you're riding on a surfboard. So like all the loops and the, the, the barrel rolls and stuff like that are the actual you surfing the waves. And so, you know, the, you'll have to probably make it brighter inside. So it's not as dark, but Mm. the actual ride itself is you surfing in Hawaii to the Hawaiian roller coaster. So, so maybe what happens is, is that you're, you're touring this Elvis museum and then all of a sudden they stop the tour because somebody noticed that experiment. What is it? Six, six, two, six, 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 six yeah. is, is with you. And he panics and he shoots a, some kind of a, a portal gun at Elvis's. Was it uh, blue Hawaii? What was it? What was the name of Hawaii? One night? Blue Hawaii, yeah. Yeah, Blue, Blue Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah, I was gonna say. Her, and then he makes that, and that's how you end up in Hawaii on on waves, out oh, of a, out out of a museum. Waves. Yeah, I like it. I Is that say. it? That's that works. I mean, how, whatever <laughs> it takes to get you in the water. Okay, you know? I thought you were gonna say some somebody sees all of the Elvis like uh, stuff being eaten and disappearing, and it turned out it's, it's well because I like that. I like the idea. Okay, you're yeah. in this Elvis museum, but I'm like, all right, we're gonna go to space. But then he's like, no, 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 we, we we're going to Hawaii. <laughs> From the Elvis Museum, I'm like, oh, okay, that which would make sense because that's why it's. But that's a catchier. That's definitely a <laughs> right. catchy soundtrack. That's sure. definitely something where, like, if you go through the ride, you're essentially surfing or no. going through. You know, you waves. Yeah. It, it, yeah. it presents two ge- geographical <laughs> challenges. It's a little yeah. different. How do you get from California? A bad <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you could have Stitch running a uh, uh, um, Elvis Museum in Hawaii if that helps you out. Yeah, yeah. something like that, but. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know he's such a fan of of Elvis, and you know there's endless amounts of music that you could use yeah. with that. And I like the fact that in that one that that has again one of the things is that everything is so dark in the ride that it just is kind of discombobulating. So having yeah. some like a nice sunny thing, maybe some water themes around you or something. However they would do it, it's got to be quick. Yeah, by the time you like, yeah. you really don't have chance to set up any gags. It's it, by the time you pass. By the time you passed it, you've already lost it. But once you start the ride, the ride is pretty much speed and visuals. Yeah, and that's what it it lacks as it has now when you're going through it is visuals. So I think in his idea, that makes perfect sense. It's speed. You got wave going over you. That's nice. Yeah, it's all fluorescent painting, and you're just you're yeah you're passing yeah, weird road sun, signs man, and stuff you know, like that. Stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so That'd yeah, be funny. yeah, I dig that. I dig it. I dig it. Like if we're going like so, if we want to go to our B ideas, like so another idea is just kind of throw out there. I thought onward would be a good one for this one. Oh, I had it in my mind, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So I, I'm interested to see how you. Ooh, okay. Well, because I like the idea because barley is you know like they, they make him out to be this guy who's all obsessed with D and D and and dragons and quests and everything like that. But if you look at his his vest, his smock, or whatever you want to call it, all these heavy metal bands are are, are all over, like pins and things, right? Yeah, like yeah, 80s yeah. And, Like all these, are, and I'm I'm like, well, what if like uh, his favorite band, Smote, was playing? Smote, dude. <laughs> It's too bad that Smoke the camera's on me. On the yeah, I know. I know. You missed that one. I did, I did. <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to break out the smoke. Uh, like, <laughs> what if they were recording in the studio and Barley uh, somehow managed to go ahead and uh, come to, to jam with the band, and then, boom, here comes Ian showing up, saying, like, oh, my God, something has happened uh, back in New Mushroomton, and, you must, and then you board Guinevere, and you put on Quest Mix, and With the, you record, boom! Yeah. You're, you're you're blasting through New Mushroomton, and you're dodging, zooming by, rocks and yeah, stuff. Man, centaurs man. and rocks and super stretch dragons man. and all that kind of stuff like that. I mean, is it quite as? Uh, yeah, it takes a lot more stretching of reality to kind of get there. But I could see that because it has a couple of elements there that I would like, which is the. Guinevere being the 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 tool by which you travel you, through. You go fast because you need to go fast, Ricky yes. Bobby. Yeah. And, 
And uh, I think like the whole idea of him having kind of like what he did with Guardians of the Galaxy, we had that cassette tape. If you watch Onward, he has the Quest mixtape, and that's how he plays the music. And there's this actual like operatic kind of score, like when. It's hard to remember because, again, it, uh, believe me, I didn't have access to Disney+. No. <laughs> but right. when Guinevere jumps and he's going into that rock formation and knocks the rock, there's some kind of operatic thing that he plays special music for that. Um, just play all Jack Black just pretty much <laughs> during that. Oh, that'd be awesome. Oh, yeah. So, you're next that'd be that'd be nice. so yeah, right. I could see making Onward work, but then you got to get him back and everything like that. So that's why I didn't ultimately didn't go with it. Mm. But that's one that you could absolutely do. Yeah, you got a lot of merchandise possibilities too. Of course, you could sell his jacket. Sure, um, they already you know, do. Could, yeah, they do. Oh, they do. Oh, I need to see that. Mm-hmm. You need to buy that. I need that. You want that? So, I do. I need to check that out. Get that. Um, but yeah, so again, I, I I just knew that would be a good uh, age range for this ride. If that makes sense, like it's a little more of a teenager type situation. Yeah, and that that was the other thing behind it is that yeah, you're not dealing with a. Um, like, you know, when you see the characters in Onward, these are teenagers. These aren't kids. Right. So you're not necessarily appealing to the youngest of the young. And yeah, there's not going to be the youngest of the young writing this thing either. Yeah, it was, it was, it's for all ages. All ages, yeah. 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 All right, yeah. guys. I had uh, another b but I didn't, I didn't use it because, one, I, I know every time we try to do these things, it's like certain, like, strings and realities that have to happen. So I was like, yeah, that one's too big for me. But I thought about doing, like, a weird kind of Planet Hollywood action movie star, great movie ride kind of, like, revival thing. Oh, I would love that. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Like, you know, you got you got Schwarzenegger, mm-hmm. Willis, and, of course, Stallone. And then you just, like, you just pretty much going through there, hitting all of their best memorable scene yeah so to speak uh but i i was like well uh i don't know who works with who with this and that and the other so that was my beat but mm-hmm. man what you get a die hard you get a rocky you get like conan like i mean like yeah it's like the great movie ride in two minutes <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> but all great action great movie ride on steroids exactly <laughs> all action just boom and then you get the merchandise and like but i don't again i didn't know who had what who saw what when you walked out but I'd be all on that because that's nice. That's historic, and it's Hollywood, and it's tied in. But Hollywood, mm, Hollywood. I like that. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. pretty cool. Kev, yeah, man. So I, you know, my my B one is actually starts with a B, and I figure I'd throw some Bluey in there. What Bluey? Bluey, you familiar with Bluey, oh, the little Australian the, dog? Wait, who? I Bluey? have not seen Bluey. this, but I've heard a lot about Bluey. I heard yeah, there was. You probably heard a lot about because a lot of people that are full of. Sh- I Whatever, heard there was some drama know. about a fart episode. Yeah, there's drama about a fart episode. Can but it's, it's a kids, that? it's an Australian kids cartoon. That, I'm looking this up <laughs> that, <laughs> about uh, the fart. My kids love <laughs> it's just Bluey. I don't even know yeah. what the hell Bluey is. He blew you yeah, away. It's Australian, <laughs> Australian uh, Yorkie, I believe, is, is the dog. Yeah, it's a it's weird a family of dogs. Yeah, it's a weird it's Austra- looking. It's a, it's Australian comic, uh, com- uh, cartoon series. That oh my. a lot of kids love and, and they enjoy it. It's, it's pretty. It's I like. I like the cartoon. It's a very blocky looking character. Yeah, yeah. blocky looking character. But uh, you why do you it, like the show? Cool. Why you like the show? I know because I think it's you know they're not afraid. I mean they talk about anything and everything. They, you know they have they show the relation between the parents and the the kids and whatnot and stuff. And it's kind of cool to see how they interact, how they teach the kids about certain things, um, how the parents attempt to teach the, the kids about certain things, and just how the kids are. Uh, it's it's. I didn't think I'd like it, but you know, as my kids were watching, I was like, "Yeah, it's not so bad." I, I, I didn't mind it so much. So okay. this, this is a Disney show. It's a, it, well, it's it's on Disney Plus. It, it's a big deal. All of a sudden, um, people were clamoring for the latest season to come out now, and there was even a countdown on I guess Disney Plus's uh, social media stuff. But um, wow, yeah. So it's like, <laughs> no, was that? Big? Yeah, I mean, well, I have I have younger kids. Just uh, full disclosure for everybody, but that's that's how I know about Bluey. And some other things which I wish I didn't know about. It's, it's whatever, <laughs> but you know, it's it's all good. And and I thought it, there's. I remember one episode that uh, that has the planets, which is a classical piece of music that is pretty epic, and you know, it, it fits the speed of a roller coaster. It has nothing to do with Sunset Boulevard, but the way it would fit in is the fact that the whole episode is based. The episode that I thought about was called Sleepy Time, mm. and so basically, what it is is. Um, you know, you're traveling. That whole episode, you're traveling through Bluey's dream. You know, mm. so you enter into that. I figure you enter into the house that they live in, 
and you know they're dealing. And the whole thing is they're dealing with the the uh, the concept that Bluey is, you know, he kind of sleepwalks or whatever while he's but while he's sleepwalking, he's dreaming about traveling through space and doing all these different kind of weird dreamy type things and just he's just having a grand old time through in his own world, his own little world. So just a very simple concept, you know, that's what you do, and then somehow you get transported into Bluey's dream, and then you're you get shot off on the coaster and you're. You're hearing the planets, music, you know, Jupiter and Mars and all that stuff. Epic music just blaring at you, and you're zooming through his dream. That's pretty much his it. planets That's make it. music. I, I'll tell you how yeah. you. I tell you how to do that one is that you just make that Playhouse Disney. Yeah, I guess if I wanted to expand it to Bluey, but I didn't want to expand it to Bluey. <laughs> I just <laughs> you wanted it to be Bluey. Yeah, all Bluey, yeah, all Bluey, all the like, time. But that's a good idea, though. Yeah, Playhouse Bluey. Disney, it, but Where it's I'll, like, hey, Playhouse Disney featuring Bluey, like Bear in the, Blue, the Great Blue House. I mean, because this is for young kids, right? Yeah, I mean, the cartoon's for young kids, but I don't know if young kids would be riding that ride. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> yeah. well, that so, could be with anything. I, mean, I want to go on Bluey. I want to go on Bluey. Oh, you're too short. <laughs> you're too, oh, you're too short. Yeah, no, exactly. He's yeah. like, F you. Have y'all want to see Bluey? You want to be experienced this ride with Bluey. They pass gas right on the cast member. That's for the episode I just watched. Yeah. Damn, okay. I'd have, yeah, 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 yeah. have to learn. I would have very to learn. It was a very rough. Uh, idea for that, but it's like, yeah, could, maybe well, I, it could feel work. I, yeah, I feel yeah, you. Yeah, I can help you on, on on how to make it seem like it fit in the studios at that spot, but beyond that, yeah, I got nothing to say. No, about it's, Bluey. It's, it's, you got to wait for your internet to work so you can watch the yes. movie. Because <laughs> I had, I only see the the I heard about the episode. I was like, oh, never heard of it. Yeah, there's, there's a whole lot of things that it, apparently Americans can't handle that Australians can, which is interesting. Um, but we, you know, we, we could. Well, they fight alligators, sure. so you know they, they can have a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. wallabies, all, that, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. rays and whatnot. it's tough. Mm. It's tough out there. Yeah, we saw crocodile, the rhinoceroses, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> silver <laughs> chairs, yeah. Yeah. All, that. <laughs> all right, uh, let's see, Lee. Lee, did you get in your B idea? Did, did am I losing track here? Yeah, I've got my B. I got a C. If y'all want to hear it, oh, I'll let's see. You, you got a D. Let's hear your C you idea. Got all the D. We can, we can get the D. Um, so my C idea is uh, somehow a Finding Nemo ride. Uh, the problem here, again, is it's, it appeals to a younger audience. But what I like about this is that similar to the Hawaiian roller coaster, we will be traveling on the actual ride through the EAC. Dude. So this could, or maybe it's Dude. more like a crush. Righteous. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Kind of like we, the crush. You know, we're going to take a left in a barrel roll, dude, and all that stuff. So I, I like the idea of, like, the ride system itself taking you through the currents and, again, your barrel rolls and your flips, that's all part of the EAC and that rough ride that you're going through. Again, it's further down my list because it's, it's hard to get that for the younger kids that are going to want to ride it. Yeah. So it's more, it's more made for old kids. The only thing I was thinking about is, like, a lot of these, we say, keep saying these are for younger kids, but, like, these are the shows my kids grew up. My kids grew up on. So now they're in their 19, 20 year old, twenty two year old. So it would appeal to them. Uh, but again, the problem is that the younger kids are going to want to ride it, and they're not going to be able to. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so, younger kids okay. have greater influence on their parents than the older kid does. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. That that was so, the problem I had. So that was my third idea. Yeah, my third idea was like Coco. Oh, that'd be because nice. music plays yeah. such a prominent role in Coco, and I could just see it where you're touring the music studio, and then as you're looking into the studio, here comes Miguel. He takes the guitar off the wall, and what do you know? It's Ernesto De La Cruz's guitar. Oh. Strum it, boom. We're all in an, in we're all the cursed. land of the dead. <laughs> yes, we're all cursed, and we're got to go to the, like the Marigold Dorito Bridge. Bridge. <laughs> I <laughs> love that show. Get ourselves out of there, but we're all making our ways. Like, hey, no, forget about listening to this. You want to see a real concert? Come here, and then we're seeing Hector and friends jamming over there in Dead Town, and long as whatever you, you call it, as long as you kick that Odessa De La Cruz off the plate, man, that dude was such a cold. It ends with a bell Wonderful. landing on him. Bong. <laughs> oh man, that's a villain right there. Dead but- again. I like that. I like that property. I love, yeah. yeah, I, I, love, I love that. Pro- I love that for them to do it. But yeah, yeah the problem is that there's to be too many kids. Like, yeah, I want to go ride Coco. Like, mm, sure, you could sorry. be just riding a Calabrejas. You know, mm-hmm. you just hop on a cat, and you're just a bunch of, on a oh. bunch of Calabrejas chasing around through the entire town. That's oh, you're better. on that thing. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the animals. Yeah, yeah. Animals. so you can ride the spirit animals. A lot of that um, that neon 
uh, yeah. the black light pieces yeah. of the black light that's already there. And you yeah. can you won't be, be just cool. going through darkness. You'll be just actually flying through the town and seeing everything. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You'll see Ernesto's concert. You'll see wherever the pier where that dude dies forever or something. You know, all different kind of all stuff. Kind yeah, of stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that'd be cool. I, I, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Right? No, yeah. If you ever seen Phil Hall Magic with the uh, introduction of Coco, picture that. Oh. But you're riding through it. No, it's it's perfect. I, I love Coco. But the problem is, is that there again, the, yeah, the the ride is too intense. Anybody else? Anybody else with another idea? I tell you, I didn't I didn't write down a C idea, but I, after hearing all this talk, you know, it would have been cool to have thought of a Spider Man one, but I don't think that could have been done. It can't. Yeah, not yeah, not yeah. not yeah. here. Not but, in that case, yeah. But it, I, all right. The only thing I was like, man, that would have been cool if they could have had something that would have gave you the impression of you swinging around or something. But yeah, like nah, yeah. But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta use that gotta, roller coaster. You gotta use the roller coaster. Though. Yeah, you're right. That, you're that's right. The, that's the concept. Is we're just reimagining it. We're not ripping it all up. Yeah. I know. No, I know. I know. But uh, that that's all I had. I got yeah. one. Yeah, right. I, I always like to put Indiana Jones more in my life. Uh, dude, I wrote Indiana Jones down right here. For yeah. Kevin. I was going to go next. And so, well, I mean, we could kind of talk about each of our ideas with Indiana Jones, but I was going to base it on Temple of Doom. Right? Oh, there you go. And that's, the only reason why I would do that's that. That's the exact idea right There you go, Because yeah, the only way you could do it is because, you know, they go into the club at the beginning. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to go with the mind car. Well, yeah, well, that's what's going to happen, I'm right? sorry. So, I jumped to him. No, but so because the way you make it fit on Sunset Boulevard is, you know, you're going into the club that they go to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then all hell breaks loose, and, and you're walking through, and, you know, you got the dude shooting the gong. Yeah. And then you're running into the alleyway, and then you hop on a plane, and then, you know, you're in the plane, which is the roller coaster, it shoots off, and then, you know, all of a sudden, so, stiff hop ends. No, 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 I'm sorry. No, not, not the plane. Somehow you end up in with the... the well, you got to be on that uh, raft. Yeah, that yeah, somehow, yeah the, somehow you end up on a raft. You'd have to elongate the pre-show or something. That's right? tough. That would be tough to do. And then you have to enter the car, mine car and, you know, something like that. But it, see, was, it was a big stretch. I, I really kind of flushed no, it out. But. You see, so the thing of it was is that I kind of came up with the same thing you did, which is that you had the, the, the club, and that's how you go into it. Yeah. But when you're in there... There's some kind of an ancient artifact that you get a hold of in the pre-show, and that opens like the earth shakes and boom, you're in the mine. You're in the mine. Yeah. Yes. Oh, like, we look into the eye of Mara, and boom, there boom. You go. There you go. Okay. Well, then yeah, you're in the club, and instead of them trading you the diamond, they're trading you the artifact. There you go. Oh, there you go. Perfect. I mm-hmm. like it. And all of a sudden, you touch it, or you look into it, whatever how you want to do it, and then boom, you're also you're right there. You're or, there, and you get chased. Or you, you could just have it to where you step into. Instead of just being the club, where you, you kind of relive that that scene from Temple of Do- Doom, you could just step Temple into it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that too. Temple of Don't. <laughs> that should be that should be the next Saints cry. Can we come up yeah. with that one? <laughs> Why not? Here's the Temple of Don't. Here's the Temple of Don't. <laughs> you could have like it be a museum of different artifacts that oh. Indiana Jones oh, has yeah. collected. I like that. And then you use Harrison Ford to stand up there and like, yeah, I, cl- I found this here and I found this there, and all of a sudden. One of those items starts to crack and shake, and did it? Oh, maybe it transports you back to the Temple of Doom. Maybe it just opens up like. Uh, oh, uh, look! This yeah, is what oh, you no. do to get there. You, you remember in the episode where you had to push on the, the statue with the breast? Yeah. Yes. That's what you got to do. Oh. Oh Lord! And then you go into the ride. Oh, show's <laughs> over. I pulled out. No, I was. Gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say like what? Picture, what, picture what, spot. <laughs> that's a very. That's that's one of my favorite. Like, Eli got to ride the ride. No, I'm fine right I'm here. I'm fine right here. <laughs> I, I am on the ride. This is the best cue ever. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Give me a drink. I'm, <laughs> so natural. Oh my goodness. I don't, can't believe the I naturalness. Think, I think I dated this person. I'm not uh, sure. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say like maybe you 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 have something where like you go in that. Park Part, and then, like all the artifacts are there, and then you have the artifact and it's glowing, and then like uh, Indiana Jones is like, hey, no, what do you do? Don't touch that! Don't touch that! And then like, of course you proverbially touch it, and then you know, you chose poorly. You, yeah, yeah, your doors open, and then you're you're in the thing. You're there, but I like you can that. have uh, like you can have a scene where short round is driving the car. It'd be like. You know, short round is taking you through uh, the streets of China, where like you call him Doctor Jones, doll. You ah, Doctor Jones, you boat, boats flying through your head. That's true. Yeah, oh, yeah you can do that. Yeah, does this? Yeah, they give you like little blocks for your feet. Uh, <laughs> the gas pedals. We gotta escape the club. We can't leave all these people here. Oh, right. Get a big jeep. Get a really big jeep. <laughs> Got about the blocks. Oh man, I wish Disney owned the Goonies, man. You need like, a super stretch, oh, Jones. oh, that would be good. Dude, would yeah, be no, that that would be fun. Oh, Goonies would be pretty goodness. awesome. 
All right, anybody else? Anybody get a, a, one last idea? Are we that's, good? That's all mine, yeah. I'm you good. legit. Yeah, yeah, I got to end with India. I love India, and I always like to keep it. That was nice. That was nice. Yeah. If any way I can. I'm going to go watch that movie tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Solar Rum, Solar Rum. Go. Yeah, Woo. I had ideas involving Zootopia and Gravity Falls, but they're not even close to being fleshed out. Again, we've had less than 24 hours to even think about this. This is a very sizable show, it though. Is. It's, it's, it's very much come so. out with It's a the, good fit. That yes. was artistic buff. Workout, right? It's there. buffed. But the point is, is that we presented our best idea, and we'd like to hear what y'all's ideas were. You know, we'd like to know what y'all would do with these properties and how y'all would fit them into the rock and roller coaster design. And look, if you want to share your opinions about your ideas on how to retheme rock and roller coaster, we're about to tell you how to get in touch with us in just a little bit. Guys, we hope you enjoyed that episode of the Magic Our Way podcast. Look, magicourway.com is the way to go. There you will find our social media links, past episodes, and more. Plus, if you want to share your opinions on how you would retheme Rock and Roll Coaster at Walt Disney World, you can share it with us through the following ways. You can shoot us an email at show at magicourway.com, or you can call or send us a text message. Just I did say text us at 1 815 Moeekin. That is 1 815. Mo Weekend 669-4226. And of course, we have a couple of guys to do things outside of the podcast. First of all, we got Eli Does Things with Comics. Hey, Rob Liefeld here, Deadpool, Cable, X-Force, Domino, Marvel Comics, Image Comics, all of it. You guys, what is up? Eli Ivory. What a great name. Eli Ivory, Comic Guru. I'm here to talk to talk about, about you. Bluey. <laughs> I am here to say, check out IvoryComics.com. That's right, you. Check out IvoryComics.com. I V O R Y C O M I C S dot com. If you're not doing that, you're missing out. You're missing out. You're missing out. Uh, the Savages comic cannot be beat, cannot be surpassed. You need to check it out, experience it for yourself, and you know the story. It's all about the glory. Congrats to you. And all the magic that you're making with your Ivory Comics, Eli Ivory, comic book guru. Check out IvoryComics.com, comic book guru, Eli Ivory, the whole package. Deadpool said to. Do it. IvoryComics.com, right now. Lightfield out. Ah, Rob, thank you for that PSA for the USA. And just like you said, you could go to the Ivory Comics website and see everything that I have there as far as those projects that he mentioned, as well as blog posts and interviews. And, of course, a link to this podcast so you never miss a beat. You never miss an episode, a trip report, an opinionated thing, a reimagined deal. You never know what you're going to get, but you got to go to the link to find out. So please always support that because that's how Synergy works. You can also find me at Facebook.com, Eli H. Ivy, as long as you're a real person. Nice to meet you. If you're a bot, I get paid to not greet you. Get Ooh. on out of here. Go on about yourself. Ooh. Bluey. 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 Yeah, that's right. Go bluey yourself away. <laughs> Boy. All right. Uh, Project Geisha has a Facebook page. You go to Facebook.com slash Project Geisha. Instagram, I'm right there. Post it up hearts and like. E- Ivy 504. You can find me there. And of course, on Twitter, you can find me at Hancock 166. So if you appreciate the baddest, then you're just bringing me the gladdest. Thank you very much. And if you want to book a vacation to Walt Disney World so you can ride Rock and Roller Coaster, that way you can get some inspiration on what to retheme it to. You can book that vacation through Lee. Lee, tell him how to do this. As you can call it, 832-431-1621. That's 832-STRETCH. 832-S-U-P-E-R-STRETCH. Mm. <laughs> you can email me at lee at com. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash lost the Vika travel. That's L A S T O V I C A travel on Instagram. You got a friend in Lee travel and on TikTok, You got a friend in Lee. If you do any of that, we'll get you hooked up and booked up with no hassle Vika. In addition, there are so many ways to support the show as a whole. And you can find them all on our website, magic Plus if you want to elevate your support of the magic, our podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash magic, our way. There you'll find six awesome tiers to support this show. Any way in which you can support the show is deeply appreciated. We also want to thank you for being a loyal listener, and we always love hearing from our listeners. All opinions are always welcome on the Magic Ari Podcast, so make sure you get in touch with us today. So my weekends, we say Quaharini. My name is Kevin. And I'm Danny. Magic out! (laughs) 
I have every intention.